Hey everybody, somebody sent me a question. He wanted to know if there was any good videos out explaining aux, sends, and buses. And I'm not sure if there's any any good videos out there, but I'm willing to make one. So I'm going to cram 12 months of training into 10 minutes. So <laughs> here we go. I'm working in Pro Tools 8. First, you want to go to your setup and IO and you want to go to bus and as you can see here I have uh, a session open and I have uh, buses already created if you want to create a bus um, usually it gives you default and it looks like this they stair step down okay so here are the buses that I've already created now what a bus does is it's it's a path for your audio to travel and why you use them is you want to take uh, a copy of an audio file and send it somewhere else while still preserving your original file. So you're still hearing your original track, but you're sending it to an effect track to mix in with the original. So I'll show you how to create uh, a new path. You go ahead and label it. We'll say verb bus 2 since I already have one created. Now right here you select mono or stereo. Usually you want stereo because you want it in both uh, speakers. Um, so you can decide how much of the left or right you want to uh, have your effect in. And go ahead and stair step it down. We'll hit OK. Now I'm going to go to my mix window and Let's say that we want to affect this violin track. We'll solo it out. I'll go back to my edit window and check to see where it actually starts. It's right here. And we'll have this going on a loop. Yeah. And that's a numeric 4 to make it loop. So, we had that verb bus created, verb bus 2, so we'll go ahead and send that there. Uh, now this is your send level window. This is how much of the copy you're going to send of your audio track. And we are going to create a new aux track. Now aux track is Aux track is sorry, <laughs> I'm just trying to talk and type. Violin aux. Now an aux track will receive the copy. So you have to go into your input and go to verb bus two. So what you see that I've done here is I've sent the copy from violin to the violin aux. So now we're going to put some kind of effect on there. We're going to go to multi-channel. Usually since since I named it verb, I'm going to go and pick a reverb unit. And I'm going to show you now how it sounds when I start to send. Alright, now that's the original track you're hearing. <laughs> So I'm going to start sending the copy into the reverb unit, and then you'll start to hear the effect. So now you can see the importance of being able to mix your original track with an affected track. Doing this lets you have the ability to to mix it on the fly and not have to go back and, and redo it as if you were going to go into audio suite and do this where it would save it to the actual actual audio file and you don't want to do that because you always want to be able to look back and if something's not working in your mix then you want to be able to to adjust that on the fly 
So that's pretty much what the importance of using auxes, buses, and sends are. Oh, a really great uh, thing to do with auxes and sends is you can make all of your drum all of your drum tracks mix to one and then you can adjust that so right here I have a drum dry which means unaffected and wet would be affected so I'm gonna go ahead and solo these tracks now you see once I've unsoloed everything here it's going through this aux track and I'll show you how I set that up in the IO setup right here I have the drum bus I have everything on that drum bus going out of the output instead of ascent this way I can send it everything to one track and be able to affect it there. Now the reason I do this is this is a technique called parallel compression and I send three separate copies to three different tracks. So all I'm doing is taking a copy from this bus to three different tracks. And what you can do with this is you can put a compressor on it and really squash the hell out of the track. I'll go ahead and show you how much I've compressed this. Almost sounds pretty nasty, huh? Well, the reason you do this is you want to get a lot of room tone in your drums and you really want to squash it and that way you can leave that room tone pretty low in the mix and still have your dry in there and also what I've done is I've created a, an EQ aux and I scooped out all of the mid range because when you're over compressing stuff it tends to to oversaturate the mid range so what I did was I took all the mid-range out of this track and I mixed it in as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flat, flatten all of the aux tracks that have a copy of each of the mixed drums. I'm going to show you how it builds the mix up in the, in the drums. So this is our dry. Sounds pretty good, but it could be a little bit more beefy. I'm not sure if you can hear it, the, the quality I'm, I'm recording on the microphone on my laptop, but if you can notice it, you can see that it really makes it punch a little bit more. But we're also kind of oversaturating the mid-range, like I said before. So what you want to do is create that EQ track with the mid-range scooped out, and then you get your, your bottom end and your high end built into it. Notice you can hear a lot more of the hi-hat. So that's pretty much what I'd use buses and sends for in aux tracks as well. Um, mostly with reverbs, delay units. So anyways that's um, pretty much all I can think of right now. Um, if you have any questions I can make another video. If you want me to do this in Logic I can show you. It's pretty much the same across the board they just do things a little bit differently. So, yeah, this is uh, Brando the Brother. Um, please subscribe, and I'll see you around.